Hello and welcome to another video. And this is a bit of a different video because on in this video I'm going to be overviewing um, the patch notes that came out a few weeks ago. I mean, it's been there for a long time, but now they have released it to uh, everyone uh, and not on an experimental branch. And there's a few changes in the change log as well that they uh, put into the patch notes. So here's the patch notes, and I have a list of everything that I want to go over. Uh, and that is uh, what I find the most relevant to the game right now. So first we're going over attack speed and cooldown reduction, because this can be quite confusing to some people. And uh, it is very understandable, I would never have figured it is how it is right now. Uh, if I was like a new player as well. Fast skills, skills and ancestral might, masteries, conversions, this is a very important one, which can be uh, very confusing. Uh, maybe I should turn down the music a tiny bit. There we go. So, various changes, that's, uh, I'm not sure what it is, honestly, but I will go over it, because I uh, made this list a few days ago. Uh, primordial reavers, um, how they uh, evolve and so on. The mighty knight, the fierce huntress, the mischievous mage, and of course attributes as well as uh, attributes uh, change log. I might uh, skip through a few things as well in the change log, but I'm not sure. So let's begin. Attack and cooldown reduction. What was Previously called attack speed, but affected by cooldown reduction, is now called cooldown reduction. So, before um, the patch, it was just called attack speed, which was both cooldown and animation speed. So, your character benefited heavily on this simple stat. But it also, like let's say you have an ability that has a very very long cooldown, uh, a good example is... Uh, rune effect with this one so you see right now it's a it's 160 seconds cooldown and my shoulder has a bit of cooldown if i take it off you can see that the cooldown increases significantly so that's pretty much what the cooldown does and then another thing is uh, attack speed so a good example is on this character right here that i'm planning on uh, making a build guide of has a node where you can scale both uh, like a lot into cooldown reduction and then at the same time you get uh, attack speed. This was pretty much the previous uh, way it figure, I mean, functioned, I mean. But uh, now there's two separate things. So this one upgrade makes it able to be like the good old one. Uh, and you can see, uh, I'm pretty sure you can see a huge difference so this is uh, without the animation speed, and with this, with. So you can see I've shoot way, way faster, because of my animation speed is uh, triggering way faster. Um, also, cooldown reduction is kept at uh, 75%. This is, like, a bit confusing, I would say, because that's not how it works. Like, let's say you have two 10% uh, cooldown reductions on your character. The first one would definitely just say, yeah, you have 10% cooldown, but then the second one would go to like 18% when they are combined, because they are multipliers and not additive on top of each other. Which is uh, kind of confusing, I would say. Um, it, a good example is, you can see here, uh, when I hold over cooldown reduction, it says 14, 14, 9, 9, 6 multipliers. There's a 0, 0. I'm not sure what that is. I'm pretty sure it's from my gloves and somewhere else. So they add up to each other. So if you plus these numbers, it wouldn't make any sense at all. Um, another great example is... Let's see. Do I have one with a lot of cooldown on it? Uh, yeah, my gloves is a good example. You see my cooldown, 48, 
when I take it off, it's only 8% uh, of a difference. But it's very clear to see that I have nearly 30%, actually just 28.5%. Uh, so it's very uh, misleading, I would say, because uh, they are simply just multipliers. Now, um, and then attack speed is kept at 90%. I'm pretty... Wait, I'm actually not sure if it's additive. I haven't really checked it. Uh, let's see. It might actually be... Yeah, okay. So attack speed is also multipliers. It, it works uh, similarly with the cooldown reduction. So if you have 15 and 15, you don't get 30. You get uh, around... 25% I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure about it. But yeah. M very misleading. But that's just how it is. Fast skills. So now in the game we have uh, skills that are called fast skills. And uh, their cooldown is 0 0.3 seconds. So they are definitely fast. And uh, they usually scale better with attack speed than actual cooldown. <clears throat> they can still get reduced by cooldown, but it doesn't really affect them as much as attack speed does, because you want your animation speed to be finished uh, when the cooldown is off. A good example is um, my book smash is uh, 0 0.15 seconds, because I have a bit of cooldown scaling. And I want to be able to shoot my books as fast as possible because of my animation speed. And that's why I can shoot uh, my books out so quickly. Um, and uh, it, it has a tiny list of uh, what is uh, considered a, a fast skill. Mighty Swing, Wood Stick. Um, oh, the, wait, they're only saying those two? Yeah, okay. So another thing. Arcane Missile is also a fast skill. Book Smash is a fast skill, Chrono Puncture is a fast skill, uh, our Attunement Pulse is also a fast skill. Um, you can see it on the cooldown, pretty much. They all have 0 0.15 on my character because I have some cooldown reduction. And you can see all the other abilities has a uh, way longer cooldown. Uh, I'm not sure about Ray of Obliteration, it might actually be a fast skill as well, because the cooldown is actually lower than my uh, other fast skills. Just an example. Um, let me see. So that was attack speed and cooldowns plus fast skills. Ancestral skill? I mean skill and ancestral skill. Let's see, where is it? Yeah, equipment, um, I don't think that's relevant. Legendary drops is not relevant. Storage is not relevant. NPC, Slom, Refunds, Blacksmith Cars, Ref, Ref uh, X Plus, Great Forge, Affinity, and Reaper Runes. Uh, I might have to go over that one real quick. Uh, maybe I don't. <laughs> it's very simple. So, yeah, Skill and Ancestral Might. So, this is something they have added to the game to make it rewarding to invest into other skills. So the more you spend into skills, the more raw damage you get, or the more elemental damage you get in uh, the ancestral tree. So you can see uh, investing slum into your class skills now grant raw damage. Skill uh, might will grant up to 6,000, which is only 4,000. I'm just gonna say that. That is in the change log. The cap is uh, 4,000. And the same goes for the elemental damage scaling. So, as you can see right here on my character, I have uh, 3,500 raw damage. I could get that all the way up to 4,000. That is quite a lot of uh, flat damage on a character, so don't uh, skip on it. And the same goes for the elemental damage. So, you can see for every 3,248 slum invested into the ancestral tree, I will get one flat elemental damage. The scale's uh, quite high in the end, so it will get all the way up to like 40,000 uh, slum invested 
before you actually get uh, one uh, elemental damage out of it. So it it ramps. Let me say it like that. <coughs> um, let's see. Let's go over conversions. Let's see. It's right here. So um, it's very short, but I feel like they should have done more uh, in the explanation of it because it is super confusing and it uh it took me uh i mean it didn't take that long for me to figure it out but it was a coincidence that i went with a build that actually uh wanted to scale some conversion damage so edits that gain from conversions from other stats are now added after applying percent and global multipliers so this is uh, misleading, I would say, because a very good example of conversion is, for example, uh, this node right here in Savagery. Um, let me go down to half my life just to explain it a bit better. Like this. Now I have, con I mean, reserved 50% of my life. And this node right here says, you have 22,000 raw max damage. And the damage is equal to my missing life. But this damage cannot get increased by percent raw damage or raw multipliers or max raw damage. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate. So a great example is uh, if I take my raw damage off, you see... Right now I get the 22, when I take it off, I, I lose exactly 22,000. Maybe a bit uh, more, but it's very close. And the reason why I most likely get a bit more is because I have some sort of damage increase on my character, which is not considered percent raw damage or raw multiplier and so on. So, how can you scale this? You can scale this through, uh, let's say you have a skill. A good example is uh, Rift Nova. So Rift Nova has a node right here where you can scale the damage through area size. So this node right here would benefit from it because it is a separate multiplier. So something like this can increase the conversion damage to some absurd levels, honestly. But you cannot get it from raw damage sources, if that makes sense. So a good, a very good example is actually the Big Fury right here. The Big Fury has a lot of great stats. So first of all, it has uh, some raw damage, it has raw damage multiplier, and it has a lot of max raw damage. And as you can see right here, um, we have 364,000 at the top end. And if I take this off, whoops, I didn't get that much. huh? So you see, um, that's how it works, essentially. And that works for every other conversion. And every other conversion can be something like this one as well, a raw lock. So you get a bunch of flat raw damage through your mana locked. You can also get, uh, let's see, this one right here. You get elemental damage through your life. This one would not scale with percent um, elemental damage or um, elemental multipliers but it will scale with other sources. The same goes for defenses, um, like armor, evasion, and uh, elemental resistance. <coughs> so these stats right here would not benefit from... Uh, let's see, what is a good example? Uh, I think there's something with... Hmm, I'm not sure, but you get the point, right? 
everything that is considered a conversion, you cannot scale it with its own source of percentage scaling, which is kind of weird. I don't really get that. Uh, I think they said they didn't want to make skills over convert, like double dipping on top of each other, so like uh, make a damage loop, for example, or a defense loop, um, and so on. You cannot do that anymore, which is a great thing. Don't get me wrong. It's a very great thing because it was very much like cheesing the game if you uh, invested into it. But now you cannot make infinite damage build, infinite uh, defensive layers, you name it. That's gone from the game, which is great. Um, but yeah, other than that, th these are very confusing. If you have any questions about it, let me know because it's such a... They they don't say anything about it. I, I think they should say more because it's such a difficult mechanic right now to actually understand. But yeah, let's let's go uh, to the next topic, which is uh, various changes, which is uh, some great ones, I would say. First off, additional projectiles, if you played before the patch, um, and you were investing a lot into, let's say, additional projectiles. Um, you cannot really do that anymore because of, of a few changes. Let me show you. First off, uh, a very, very popular shoulder, which is this one right here, cloning pads, made you in the past able to get just straight up more projectiles. I think it went up to like uh, seven or eight additional projectiles. But now this shoulder only grants you additional projectiles if you actually only had one projectile on your skill. So you would have to have one projectile only on the character to be able to benefit from this shoulder right here. That's one of them. And the other one is that percentage additional projectiles does not exist anymore, except for one node in the ancestral tree, which is uh, right here. Greater Quiver makes you able to get two additional projectiles as well as 15% increased additional. So that's the only source that you can get uh, increased from, except if it's a uh, Reaper that can actually grant it as well. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'm pretty sure there is. Um, so, Another great thing, I'm not sure if they are going over it, I'm pretty sure they are, I'm gonna go over it uh, in a second. Uh, projectiles can now both fork, pierce, and at the same time, which is great. This was not possible in the past, so I think it usually just pierced enemies. Um, but now it's just guaranteed with both, which is very, very powerful. I think it, when you hit an enemy, there's like three projectiles getting uh, produced afterwards when they uh, pierce them, if that makes sense. Like one from the pierce and then uh, two more from the fork. I'm not 100% sure if that's uh, how it works, but I would figure that is how it works. Um, and then base duration of Inner Fire has been reduced from 12 seconds to 7 seconds. I think this is a great change and I like that you have to invest way more into Inner Fire because Inner Fire as a mechanic is very powerful and definitely needed a change. <coughs> uh, armor break mitigation doesn't really matter that much. You can get a lot of uh, armor penetration on gear as well as elemental penetration. Uh, skills with charges such as lightning rods, prime totems now start recharging right after the first charge is spent, which is nice. Um, cooldown time now indicates the time it takes to gain one charge instead of gaining all charges. That's actually nice. That's a great change. I haven't read this. I'm just reading it now. Uh, the cooldown time of such skills have been reduced accordingly. That makes sense. Uh, minions. Minions now have movement speed relative to ours. That's great. So that means they can actually... Uh, I think they made it them able to actually outrun you. Uh, maybe they say it right here, perhaps. 
Minions now interrupt the, the attack and try to retarget as soon as their previous target is dead, which is nice, so their targeting is way faster uh, and uh, more smooth to play around. It's still probably not in a great spot right now because of how uh, much clear speed you can ca can get on a standard character. For example, with uh, something like a good example is just inner fires. Inner fires, you can clear the whole screen in a matter of a seconds. It's actually insane. But on minions, you cannot really do that. Um, effects dealing damage based on enemies' max life. Oof. This is a great one, and I'm happy that they changed this. Such as Soul Eater Mantle, Reaper of the Butterfly, Reaper of the Temple Keeper, etc. are reduced by 75% against um, elites, and then 90% against the bosses. <clears throat> I think there's another change to this, but I'm just I'm not sure where to find them. But I'm pretty sure it only takes uh, like let's say you take one percent of an enemy's. A better example is probably ten percent of uh, an enemy's life, and when you take uh, another chunk of their life through the 10%, it's 10% of their remaining life that they take uh, the life from. I'm pretty sure that's how it uh, works now. Uh, on top of it being very, way harder to actually do the damage on elites and bosses. So before you could like simply melt everything with some dot builds because of uh, for a good example is the soul mantle. That one was so crazy that no matter how much life enemies got, you could just uh, eat them alive because of uh, it was uh, taking their max life, which was crazy. Um, let's see. Doesn't really matter. Let's see what's the list at. Um, okay, so I'm pretty sure it's this one right here with the Slum Reavers and Affinities and st so on. So I'm gonna... Wait, let me check. Nope, I'm not gonna go over that. I'm sorry. I don't think this is super relevant, except for maybe... Yeah, so Slum Reaver Affinity uh, is a bit different now. So per affinity that you have on a character, you get 0.2 uh, like level requirement. So if you have 10 um, affinity on your character, a uh, weapon will get the primordial version at level 98, for example. So if you have 100 uh, Slum Reaper affinity, um, it reduces it by 20 levels, so you only have to get it at level 80 instead to get the primordial version of a uh, Reaper. You can get it all the way up to 150, so you can already get it at uh, level 70, which is very fast to get uh, right now. So I just wanted to go over that real quick. Um, so, I think it's time for the Mighty Knight. There's a few great changes on this guy that I really, really like. Especially, I'm just gonna mention it right now, Block is insanely overpowered right now for two good reasons. There's another um, like legendary in the game that got changed from being flat uh, life gained from Block to max life gained which is insanely powerful, but I'm not going to go over that uh, right now. Okay, so the Mighty Knight. Let's go over the block. Block now destroys half of your block stacks when triggered instead of removing all your block stacks. So if you have 100 block stacks, you suddenly only uh, lose 50% of it, which is very nice. So if you lose them again, you would go down to 25. If you block again, you would go down to 12 and a half, which is probably just 12 or 13. I'm not sure if it rolls up. But Plug right now is in a very, very good state, uh, state right now. It's such a powerful mechanic now. 
Astral Swords now deal skill damage instead of reaver damage. This is a great change because reaver damage is only from your weapon or from dexterity scaling. Or in the savagery node, uh, at rank 60, where you can get a bit more reaver damage. And there's probably some other mechanics where you can get uh, more reaper damage, I'm not sure. So, it being skill damage now, means that it can scale through uh, raw damage as well. Which is very very powerful, because you already get so much uh, raw damage on your character. And to compensate for this, they reduced the astral meteor damage to deal 300% skill damage instead. Which is fine, because of... The luck mechanic on the Mighty Knight also grants max raw damage for each stack of luck up to 100. So this is like a mini version of uh, the Big Fury with the max raw damage scaling. So potentially this is a 50% increased uh, damage modifier on uh, certain builds that do not use um, the luck at all. Like maybe, let's say you have a character that passively deals damage to enemies and you use raw damage, you can just stay at 100 uh, luck and just keep uh, that damage bonus on, which is nice. But otherwise it's just a tiny bonus on every character that uh, yeah, goes uh, with the knight. Um, Banners of War, honestly, they should change this completely. I don't think banners work in a game like this, unless you are playing with them in the Great Forge, where you can actually stay stationary most of the time. Otherwise, yeah, banners of war is just a bad mechanic, and I want them to change it somehow. If you can get a permanent banner um, as a backpack or something like that, that would be awesome. But it's not, sadly. Ascension is a skill that got buffed with the cooldown going from 14 to 8 but I would say it's a not really a buff because of cooldown working as it does right now in the past you could get let's say on a shoulder you could get 60% attack speed which also meant cooldown cooldown uh, back in the day was crazy so if you had 60% uh, cooldown. I can just show you right now. So before it was 14 seconds, right? Uh, let me see. What's the calculator? There it is. It went from 14, right? And when you have 60% attack speed slash cooldown, that would mean that the cooldown would go all the way down to 5.6 seconds. And that's just from one piece of gear. It's honestly crazy how good it is. As of right now, you can maybe get like a shoulder with max 30%, I'm pretty sure. So let's take it into consideration how it works. So this is 30% uh, off, because it's a multiplier. It's It says it's the same, right? But if you in the past have two modifiers with the 60% attack speed, you would suddenly go from this like 5.6 seconds cooldown to 2.2 seconds cooldown. So it was so easy to get pretty much any ability in the game down to like one second or something. It, it was very easy with the enough investment. But as of right now, when you take the 5.6 seconds with another pure stat modifier, that is 30%, it's not that great. You see? It's almost like half as bad i would say so n right now you have to invest so much more into cooldown and it's actually crazy how much you have to do that but on top of that you also have a cap of 75 percent cooldown reduction cap you cannot do anything about that it only works on certain abilities where they have uh, like let's say in build cooldown reduction I just wanted to get that out. Uh, yeah, I think that was pretty important. Um, I'm not sure what that is, honestly. 
Oh, yeah, that's a note from uh, Ascension, I see. Let me see. On Deflect Specialization, you get Stamina out grants uh, from 14 to 60 flat life and from 20 to 30% life regeneration. That's great. You get more thorns damage, you get some more scaling with thorns on block. Just in general, a lot of great things. Uh, and another great one is this one right here. Steady arm now reads, after blocking, you immediately gain 15 block stacks. This is powerful as fuck, dude. It's great. So, it's very hard to get under 30 block stacks with this node right here. Uh, as well as getting the... Let me see... I want to just go on my knight real quick. I'm currently making a build, so he's very slow. But... Um, it's this node right here. After blocking, you immediately gain 15 block stacks. This is very powerful paired with uh, this node right here on the crest shield. So while this is equipped, you have 15 block stacks at bare minimum. But because of how this works, when you block, you get another 15 stacks. So you can pretty much not go under 30 stacks of block ever, which is very, very powerful. Very great mechanic, and uh, I don't know. It's very, it's such a powerful mechanic. I'm, I, I wonder if they are gonna uh, like nerf it at some point because I feel like it's a like insanely powerful mechanic in the game right now. Um, I don't think I want to go over every skill. I think that's uh, a bit too much. Um, I'm probably just gonna. Let me see if there's anything important that I want to mention. I don't think so. Let's go to the Fierce Huntress. Um, okay, a great one in the Fierce Huntress is Sincerity. Um, so, casting a skill while tormented will no longer reset your Sincerity back to 6. Which is very great, as you saw in my uh, previous build guide. I um, made it so that I got a lot of benefits from being at Torment and actually got uh, some huge damage bonuses as well. It was a very nice uh, feeling character. So it says, so long as you uh, cast different skills, you remain tormented. Great. This is a great mechanic because before you couldn't stay at Torment and Torment was just bad in general. Um. And with, uh, if not, you will uh, move back toward Delighted normally if you cast the same skill twice, for, as an example. Another great thing that they added is uh, Sincerity now grants attack speed per stack. So currently 12 is uh, the max stacks, so you could get, actually get like 24% increased attack speed, which is very powerful. And as for... Uh, missing Sincerity sex, like at Torment state, you would get 12% cooldown reduction, which is also very great. I'm, I'm very happy that they actually are adding some passive bonuses on each character. Um, and I'm going over the Mischievous Mage in a second, because Mischievous Mage is actually insane as well, with his uh, passives. Um... Revenant Daggers now deal uh, from Reaper damage to skill damage, which is great. Because before it was only Reaper damage, and that was kind of bad. But now you can scale it uh, through raw damage as well, which is very powerful. I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to make a Revenant Dagger build at all because of how cooldown works in the game. For example... Um, uh, what's the name of the... Uh, I, sh I think it's Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter? Is that right? Yeah, Sharpshooter of the Wild had uh, this... Um, let me see, what am I talking about again? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Revenous Daggers. So this one right here, Revenous Pace, 
made you able to lay down a ravenous dagger and uh, when uh, you take this one right here action plan you could actually trigger ravenous daggers on the ground to seek you and when they hit you they would explode into a ring of blades pretty much and that scaled with increased area size and effect so it could actually do some like very high amount of damage but it was only scaled for rebo damage which meant that you couldn't really scale it in some crazy way except for maybe taking uh, the rebo called the giant slayer because it added some uh, Increased damage taken, weakness. I think it's called enfeeble stacks. That was pretty much like the only way you could scale it to some uh, high numbers. Um, so it didn't feel that great. But right now with the cooldown as it is right now, it's very hard to do something like this uh, with ravenous daggers. But then again, it's probably more like a passive thing that you have to do on the fierce huntress. Maybe there's some niche mechanic where you can actually get it up and uh, running somehow. <coughs> and then another thing is uh, Revenant Staggers are now merged by nearby Revenant Staggers to reduce noise, but deal increased damage based on the number of merges. So before you could like have a lot of clutter on the screen as well as some uh, high and loud sounds. It was not very pleasing, but now it's way better uh, to... Uh, Actually, uh, also, like the performance of the game is getting better at this point because they merge into one single uh, Revenant Stagger that just deals, like, let's say if there's two Revenant Staggers on top of each other, it's going to be one big dagger that deals uh, twice the amount of damage, I'm pretty sure. Which is great, very great. Uh, traps, the knockby applied by traps has been reduced by 80%. I think this is a great idea because of how insanely powerful the knockback was. But it could also be a downside for the character because of how far you would knock something back. It didn't feel that insanely good, but it was a fun mechanic while it lasted. Okay, third syndrome. Oh my goodness, there's been some great changes. From Bones to Ballista now reads, whenever you kill an enemy with your primary or secondary, before it was just on kill, like any kill. And that could also be your own turrets. So that meant you could like have a character that just primarily only used the turret syndrome. Uh, and it was pretty hilarious how great it was. It's still very powerful, I would say. Like Ballistas are in a very good spot still. They can do some very, very dirty work with damage, as well as just clearing the whole game. <clears throat> so, Never Ending Torment now has been moved to Sharpshooter of the Wild, uh, which makes sense. Didn't make any sense on the turret syndrome. And then another thing they made is uh, Trap Syndrome, new upgrade tier 8. Instead of laying down a portable ballista, you lay down a trap instead. And then Turret Syndrome has a 50% cooldown time. I actually have it running on my character right now, where I can place down traps. So my current idea is to make a build where I scale a lot of um, stun mechanics. So you can see here, this uh, bow of upheaval makes me able to deal increased damage against stunned enemies as well as dealing increased damage against enemies from their behind like from their back so there's pretty much like double dips on top of each other which is very powerful and that was pretty much the whole idea with this character um so yeah i'm definitely going to be uh, showcasing this at some point in the future tumble hand to hand now grants from 10 to 20% increased damage, which is nice. Self-control now grants, uh, instead of 10% cooldown reduction, it's going to be 25% attack speed, which is quite, quite nice. Uh, Agility of the Wind now grants cooldown reduction, uh, from cooldown reduction to attack speed. <coughs> Overall, I think Tumble 
or at least the uh, sharpshooter is in a very good state right now. It has a lot of potential to be one of the strongest characters in the game, just because of uh, this node right here that grants you a lot of additional projectiles. And you can pair this with the Endless Quiver, I mean Greater Quiver from the Ancestral Tree to get even further incre uh, increases to additional projectiles. And it's an Ancestral Gift, so that means you can increase the level by one uh, from uh, this ring right here, which is very, very powerful. Um, so... Smokescreen, the specialization uh, from, uh, what's it called? Mistwalker. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so a great change, in my opinion, is the golden strike can now only occur once per enemy. This, in the past, was the best, like, magic, not magic, Goldus farm in the game paired with, for example, the Great Forge, because in the Great Forge you could actually gain stacks of Golus per enemy hit, and you could like keep doing that till you got like millions upon millions of uh, Golus. Like, I think I had a few runs where I actually got up to 100 million Golus in a single Great Forge run. That has been completely removed now, so it's much more like luck based in the Great Forge, for example. And on top of that, you could also like just do straight up normal uh, expedition farming with this, and you would get a lot of gold out of it. But now it only occurs once per enemy, so I think that's a great change. I don't really like uh, like let's say Golos Farms Magic Find in uh, action RPGs. I think it's more healthy for the game to have, let's say, a hard mechanic like the Great Forge, where you get rewarded for um, actually staying in there till the end. Um, like it's a high risk, high reward kind of situation, and I feel like that's better for the game in the long run. You can still do uh, Goldus farms as well as Slom farms with a certain Reaper that I cannot remember the name of. But that is completely up to you. Okay, so uh, arrow shot is considered a fast skill and has a 0 0.6 uh, seconds cooldown. I actually thought it was lower, but uh, I remember incorrectly, I guess. It got buffed in uh, skill damage, which is nice. So this is uh, another mechanic with uh, traps, which is a very nice one. Tracking arrow now also has the following effect. Whenever you deal uh, critical strike damage to... Uh, what does it say? Critical strike damage with arrow shot to attract enemy, it has 10% chance to lay down a trap. So I'm currently building around this. I'm just not gonna spoil it. So it's great. Let me say it like that. It's very fun to play around. It's probably not one of the stronger things you can do, but it's fun. <clears throat> um, arrow of Illusion now reads, uh, whenever you cast Arrow Shot while delighted, you have a 25% evasion multiplier for the next 4 seconds. Before it was just a permanent buff if you were at the delighted state. Um, so that, I guess that's a better mechanic. Um, I'm not sure why I'm reading this, uh, I shouldn't be, because it's just the changes for all the skills. If there's anything that I want to mention that might be... Uh, let me see... No, this is the Wild Void Arrow. I don't think that is that important. I feel like Immortal Arrow is a, in a better state now, as well as uh, Wandering Arrows. So right now in the game you can, like before you had like a passive, like this one right here, I'm pretty sure, that was just named Wandering Arrow. And what it did was it created a Wandering Arrow that, just like Yondu from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, where it had like an arrow traveling around and dealing damage to enemies. 
but it only had like a 50% uh, skill uh, damage base. But now, if you scroll down on the skill, um, it says, while a model arrow is not being cast, a wandering arrow fights uh, by your side and automatically targets and strikes random enemies within a four yard radius. And as you can see, at level one, it's 54%, and it gains 4% base damage per level of the mastery, which is great. It's a lot of damage that you can scale from this, and you can definitely just make a build around it if you wanted to. It's honestly in a, honestly in a great position right now. And um, <clears throat> you can build uh, something like... Uh, let's see... A great mechanic for this is probably just either the Big Fury, the Giant Slayer, or something completely different that I cannot remember the names of. But it it's such a simple, like, great mechanic that I, I just wanted to mention it, because if you are playing on a Huntress, and you're just using, let's say, heavy explosive projectile, but you have no idea what other skill you want to put on your second one, you just slap this on and then you have like four wandering arrows doing a lot of damage for you. And on top of that, there's a shoulder that increases that amount of wandering arrows uh, quite a lot. So currently mine gives uh, six additional wandering arrows, so a total of ten arrows just seeking down enemies and dealing a lot of damage. It's such a great mechanic. And I, I can actually highly recommend it. I, I might have to make a build guide of something related to Wandering Arrows. <clears throat> Mischievous Mage. This is one of the more interesting ones, but also one of the characters that got nerfed the most. Like after testing out different builds on Mischievous Mage, he got nerfed quite a lot. He did get some cool buffs, but they don't make up for it, I would say. And one of the nerves, which is obvious to uh, like veteran players, is uh, cooldown reduction. It got nerfed so badly that it uh, pretty much like butchered like uh, all of the arcane master, for example, because of how long of a cooldown it has. So I had a build in mind where I wanted to scale um, damage through uh, mana lock uh, on uh, the mischievous mage through this node right here. I know I explained earlier that conversion is very different and doesn't scale with uh, raw damage modifiers, but on some skills you get some ridiculous amount of increases. So my initial plan was to do something with the Orb of the Arcane Master, but the cooldown is just not justified to actually make something around it, uh, around it because of how slow it is. So I wanted to go something like clones and then invest into fork chance, get as much cooldown as possible. But the cooldown is still like one second. And that feels kind of off if you ask me. Like you can see it uh, right here. It's a one second cooldown. And if I cast it, this would be the same on uh, the clones. Of course, they would have uh, additional projectiles because I would invest into it or use the shoulder. But as of right now, I feel like the mischievous mage got nerfed the most uh, out of the other characters. But uh, enough about that. Let's go over what has changed. So, Emblems is a passive thing for the Mischievous Mage, which is exclusive to him. So, for every Arcanic Emblem you have, you get 5% increased attack speed, which is a very nice mechanic, I would say. And the same goes for Temporal Emblem you have, you get 3% cooldown. You can get up to uh, 5 currently, uh, with the right specialization. And then one of the greater ones is 5% skill and elemental damage for each ele um, for each obliteration emblem you have. This is very powerful uh, for two good reasons. It probably says just skill damage and elemental damage, but it's a multiplicative modifier. So 
uh, a great um, example is Booksmash has uh, a built-in uh, like modifier around emblems where you can actually double that modifier, but they are actually two different modifiers, which means you can get with the phlegmatic caster and plus this one right here, phlegmatic uh, shula, you get up to four emblems. When you get uh, to cast, let's say, book smash, you get four obliteration emblems, which means 20% uh, multiplier to skill damage and elemental damage. But if you equip this one right here, I cannot say the name of it because it's, I don't know, cannot pronounce it, sorry. If you pair it with this one right here, you get twice as much. As you can see right here, if I shoot it, go into my skill overview, over raw damage. Um, wait a minute. Let me not uh, have this on. This is probably a better example. Let's see. Oh yeah, let, let me do that. Okay. And as you can see, I have 220 multipliers because I have uh, the emblems on. You cannot see them because the, uh, uh, they usually don't show up in uh, town. But that's one of the great mechanics about it. You can stack that with the cooldown as well, where you can get double 12% cooldown or two uh, double 20% attack speed modifiers, which is great. You can do it on the other specialization called uh, Devoted Shula, where you can actually get up to five stacks, which is pretty nutty. Um, whereas uh, before you would get 20%, but now you can get 25 instead, which is quite significant. Okay, enough about the emblems. Arcane, bar uh, well, Arcane Bond now deals uh, elemental damage equal to 15% of your max Mana every second uh, added to mana spent. I don't, I don't really know, man. Arcane Bond might be good if you play around the detonation reaper. Otherwise, I don't think it's uh, that impactful. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, anything important? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Book smash, Rift Nova, Chrono Puncture. Uh, oh yeah, and then another thing is uh, all of the Arcane Master had a legendary bracelet that made everything related to cooldown and uh, reduced damage could not be applied. Like, it, it just simply ignored it. But now, it uh, only makes uh, modifiers from uh, increased damage, I mean, reduced damage on the upgrades uh, down to a 25% reduction instead of, like, let's say the 50% right here. So, just just in general, all of the Arcane Master got gutted, I feel like. It's not in a great state unless you are self-casting it, which can still be probably alright, I'm not sure. Like, I've had some theory crafting sessions where I just wanted to see what could be the best for this skill. It's probably something along the lines with the Orb of the Obliteration Master, um, where you can get some pretty high numbers on it, uh, and as well as scaling it with uh, this mastery right here, the Devoted Shula, where you can pretty much split a projectile into two and then actually get a lot of benefit from that node. It's pretty much like double damage essentially uh, when you take this as well as it has 250% uh, increased damage modifier which is pretty crazy. It's still pr pretty powerful, don't get me wrong. As well as fork chance being buffed as it is. <coughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, I don't think I want to go over everything in the Ancestral Legacy. That would take way too long, and I feel like it would be better if you took your time and is, like discovered it yourself. 
now that I'm looking at it, there's just one thing I want to mention, um, which is probably going to be this one. And it's just like more of a recommendation than anything else. So Frostbolt uh, now deals 80%, I mean from 80% to 2 to 120% elemental damage. So it's like a 50% increase as well as getting another 100% increase against chilled enemies or frozen enemies. So it's like three times the damage on base. Uh, and there's a lot of other mechanics in the game that makes it very powerful. I'm just gonna say that you wanna, if you wanna play around Frostbolt, go for it. I think there's a lot of cool interaction with it, and I feel like you should definitely try it out and figure out something uh, yourself. It's great. I, if you don't do it, I'm gonna make a build guide. All right, <laughs> because it's in a great state. I feel like. Um, let's see, anything that I'm missing? I don't think so. Okay, attributes. Man, this is a long video, I'm sorry about that. But, yeah. Let's go uh, through it. <coughs> Toughness. Um, let me see. I don't, I don't think uh, these are the important ones. <coughs> let me see. This one doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. Toughness now grants... Oh, this is a great one. So instead of granting 6 and plus 9 life regeneration, which is, let me say it right now, very pathetic, it grants you uh, 6 plus 9% percent <coughs> all damage reduction, which is very great. That's like 15% reduction to everything in the game. Very, very strong. Another thing, toughness grants uh, a lot of thorns, so it's way easier to scale thorns on a character. Let's say you want to play wood stick, where you get a lot of additional damage from thorns. That is uh, one of the reasons you could possibly take this. Very strong. Savagery now, doesn't matter. Uh, only effects, primary and secondary, doesn't matter. Rank 30? I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it's this one right here. This one is pretty insignificant, if you ask me. Because it's very... I mean, it's not even situational. Like, if you had 10% life, you could as well, like, be dead. Right? Unless you are reserving your whole life pool for some reason. And are uh, benefiting from it. But I don't know, man. This is a weird mechanic. Uh, da, 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 da. Determination... doesn't matter. This one, Determination uh, at rank 60 now grants, instead of 40%, like just straight up normal 40% increase, to a 50% multiplier. You can definitely build around this on the gold-plated Reaver if you wanted to. And it says um, at, I think it's, yeah, at 50% life, you get this uh, buff, which is very powerful if you want to build around it. I will mention, though, that the gold-plated um, gold Reaver got nerfed to only 25% benefits now, I think it is. <coughs> but uh, that's for another day. Um, let's see. Detonation now at... Okay, so you can make, uh, like you can restore life through uh, mana costs. This is honestly a great thing. You can make something uh, very powerful with this. A good example is if you take this on a character that are playing around the, let me see, where is it? This one right here, the unkillable berserker, you can make <clears throat> Let's say your mana costs uh, very high on something specific, and you are like always at uh, low life because you want to be that, and you cannot be instigated by enemies at low life because of uh, this Reaper right here. So if you have something that costs, 
like a lot of mana, you can then restore that life back when you actually get hit, for example. Where you don't have to, let's say, leech from enemies, which is... I feel like leech is in a... Definitely a better state right now, but it's still a bit clunky on certain characters that are not hitting that often. Like you want to hit uh, a lot of times before you actually get up to your maximum of amount of life leech, which feels a bit off, I would say. Um, so this one definitely a great change because it was only 10% before, but now it's like 100% of your mana cost, which is great. Uh, let me see, seal. This one, I played around this a lot and in my next build guide I will be using this. Simply because it's such a great mechanic. I'm actually doing it on this character right here. Uh, you can see I have invested into seal. So, this one makes you able to reduce your mana cost to 100% reduction. So everything that costs mana doesn't cost mana anymore. Um, which is pretty insane, and it even works for something like Arcane Breach that has a tag that says Arcane Breach's mana cost is increased by 100% for each Arcanic Emblem you have. But that doesn't really matter because you have reduced all your mana cost to zero. Uh, I tested this. It should... I should... It, I would say that it should go the other way around, like they should mitigate each other. Because uh, for some reason... The seal node at rank 15 is a multiplicative modifier. So, if you have 100% less mana cost reduction, you cannot increase it by any means. Like, it's impossible. But, there's an exception, and I tested it, and I really hoped it worked. Which was uh, this node right here. The ancestral uh, instability does not work with it, sadly. I mean, if it did, it would have been so busted. Like, it would be be crazy. So this one says, um, while this aura is toggled, you have a like flat mana cost per second, and this increases every second by twenty five percent. And for some reason, this is, uh, I mean, you cannot mitigate it for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I'm glad it uh, does because. Uh, Otherwise, you could have builds that had a pretty much infinite amount of uh, crit damage and critical, uh, I mean, essential strike damage. So just after like 100 seconds, you would get 1000 crit uh, strike damage as well as 3000 essential strike damage. I'm happy that it doesn't exist. Oh wait, no it doesn't because it's only 25% increased effect. Whatever, let's move on, it doesn't matter uh, in this context. <clears throat> um, let me see, silence, not a very strong mechanic if you ask me, not at, anymore at least. In the past it was like, when you silenced enemies they couldn't even do anything, like they couldn't even make a normal basic attack. But now it's only spell based uh, enemies that are silenced. Um, let's see, willpower. This one, I used that in the previous character with um, the Inner Fire character with Thundercrag, Cast and Crit, where I got some benefits from it. Very nice. Um, let's see, Penetration, that's great. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, they're even saying it themselves. Previously, Previously called attack speed, I know it's confusing. <laughs> yeah, so before, like, dexterity got actually heavily nerfed, because before it was actually just both, but now it's only attack speed, which is uh, the animation speed. <clears throat> which is uh, kind of sad, honestly. I feel like that should have been uh, an attribute that actually granted some cooldown reduction. Or at least at some point, like let's say at rank 50 or 60, something, something. I think that would be great for the game, at least. Because it's very hard to... In the beginning of the game, you cannot really invest that much into cooldown reduction at all. There's not that many sources for, uh, sources for it. 
Um, this node right here at rank 15 in dexterity is actually great now. Uh, right, wait, 15? I mean, uh, at rank 30. Isn't it 30? Uh, oh, I think they changed it. Yeah, fi rank uh, 15 and um, 30 has been swapped. So it just means, uh, let's see. While in combat, as long as you cast, uh, as long as the last skill you cast is a totem, you gain a uh, totemic uh, dexterity stack every second, granting you 1% increased totem effect, which is great because uh, right now, if you use another skill, you would then uh, lose one per second instead of like losing everything uh, as it did before. But I think in the past it like scaled infinitely. So in the Great Forge, if you were playing a totem character, you could like have infinite scaling pretty much. But then again, it would ramp up very slowly. Like after 200 seconds, you would only get 200 stacks of uh, totemic uh, dexterity. But now it's a very consistent buff which, in my opinion, is, is a better mechanic and uh, easier to play around. I think it's a, in a great spot, at least. And uh, pairs really well with uh, the Great Forge, for example. Um, let's see... Ultimatum, legendary effects, bug fixes... Oh yeah, and then another thing, it's actually in the changelog. Uh, attribute train changelog. I'm sorry about that sound. Tribute... Right here. So, a very, very nice change is... Attributes now grant, instead of flat points of raw damage, for example, in the Savagery, it grants 1% uh, raw damage instead. And that goes for pretty much everything. So previously, you got a bit of flat armor in Toughness, but now it's percentage, way stronger, because you can get so much flat on your characters. Same goes for evasion, elemental resistance. Uh, there's an exception with uh, mana, which is self-explanatory. If you could get 75% increased max mana, that would be busted on some uh, certain characters. Uh, so yeah, this is still flat mana scaling, but it goes up to 2300, so it's it's still quite significant uh, for the amount you invest into it. Uh, and the same goes for willpower. Before it was flat elemental damage, but now it is percentage. Very powerful and a great change in my opinion. Attack speed is still the same, but you lost the cooldown re reduction. Um, and it's just animation speed now. And then... Uh, bravery is uh, pretty much unchanged. I'm not sure if there's anything they changed about it. Um, but yeah, I think this is pretty much about it. For the patch notes, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, if there's anything that uh, you're unsure about in the patch notes or just in general about the game, I most likely have an answer for it. Uh, yeah, so ask me any question you want and I will definitely try my best to answer it as uh, directly and like easily as possible to make it understandable for you. If you watched it this long, uh, I mean, that's crazy of you, but <laughs> like over one hour, I appreciate it if you watched this far. Um, but yeah. I think that's about it and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video which is going to be a build guide on this guy right here. Um, I already recorded it but I feel like I had to make the patch notes overview simply because uh, two of you guys asked for it and now you're getting it. So if this video gets two views and two likes I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, thank you so much for watching and hopefully this helps uh, some new players as well, or veteran players, I don't know. Yeah, see you in the next video and take care of you. So, I mean, yeah, see ya.